Welcome back to the Sports Talk ATL podcast. I'm Chase Searle at Sports Talk ATL Twitter, joined by Jake Gord at Camp Guard. Jake on Twitter and Alex Sword at Go Sports Talk on Twitter. Huge night for Braves country, starting with a shutout of the Mets. That was the most important thing, cutting the lead to three and a half games. But then you have Mike Soroka dominating Rome, eight strikeouts over four innings and only pitched like 40 pitches. It's only the first step, but it's a big step. And then Michael Harris re-signs for eight years, really 10 years because he's got two years of club option. Jake, I want to ask you, which one of these three things that happened last night are you most excited about? Uh, it's really hard to pick. It's definitely between uh, It's definitely between Soroka and Harris. I don't know. I'll, I'll pick the uh, I'll pick the uh, the one that's a little easier to talk about. I'm going to go with Mike Soroka. Uh, through three innings, he faced nine batters. Uh, one week ground out, the rest of them were punchy. Struck out eight guys. Uh, apparently his slider velocity up, his change up velocity is up. Uh, and apparently in that fourth inning, he ran into a little bit of trouble. That might just be a little fatigue. Um, I still think he only gave up like one hit, and it was something that apparently should have been scored an error. Um, so he looked really sharp. And, you know, when you talk about the implications for this season, that's so huge. I mean, if you talk about getting that Mike Soroka back, which I'm going to try to temper my expectations, but when you see him play like that, it's hard not to get excited. Alex, what about you? Which one? Which one of those three are you most excited about? I'm going to go in the opposite direction. Uh, you know what's in front of us right now, which is the Mets. Uh, we're chasing them down in the division. Uh, those two wins, you know, we had to win, and they and we were favorites, so we should have won. Um, but it's good just to see the old Charlie Morton. I mean, that was the best outing of the season by far, and it was vintage. It was awesome to see. Yeah, I've been telling people to to slow down on the Charlie Morton stuff because at the end of the day, if you watch Charlie Morton all season, the results haven't been there. He's kind of missed with some pitches, and he's given up a ton of home runs, which is very unlike him over the course of his career. But the stuff's still there, and the guy's a veteran. He knows how to pitch. The stuff, the slider, or the, you know, the curveball's still crisp. The fastball's still up in the upper 90s when he wants to get it there. And last night, that fastball he, he had was just unbelievable. He was spotting that thing on the corners with movement, uh, cutting it you know, two-seamer, moving it both ways, and the curveball was just unbelievable. It was a masterclass by Charlie Moore, and I, I agree that that might be the thing I'm most excited about. But I'll go with Michael Harris because, hey, you get you get Michael Harris for eight years, locked in for 10 years, signed really, I think it's 2032, when he's probably going to be a free agent because I think it's going to be a no-brainer by the time uh, 2030 rolls around that, for, you know, keep him for 15 mil and $20 million. And now you have a young core. You have six or seven guys already locked up in through, like, you know, the 28, 2028 season. And then you get Dansby locked in, hopefully, Max Freed. I mean, you're talking about a legitimate chance at building a dynasty here. And I don't think the Braves, this means the Braves won't be active in free agency. I think they are going to be in the market for big free agents because a lot of these guys are under very manageable contracts. It's not like Michael Harris is going to be paid $15 million next year. That doesn't happen, you know, until 2028. It's not like Vaughn Grissom is going to get paid that. You know, Austin Riley, all these guys, you know, it'll slowly increase and eventually the payroll, you know, will increase. But right now you can still go after big name guys and you don't really need 10 of them. You just need one. Like if you go out and get a Jacob DeGrom, like this team feels unbeatable. So I'll go with Michael Harris. That's the most exciting because talk about the future. We're going to be here having these same conversations about championships for the next 10 seasons because of deals like this. And at what point, guys, do we build an Alex Anthopoulos statue? Has that ever happened? Has that ever happened, a GM getting a statue? Because if the Braves go on and win three World Series in the next 15, 20 years, and he sticks with them, which which hopefully he does, I, I, do you not build a statue? He might be the most important piece of this puzzle. I, I don't know about a GM, but the, the Panthers owner that got, uh, I guess, like uh, forced out, the one that was like a big pervert, there was a statue of him outside of Carolina State. Yeah, but he, like, that's like him doing it himself. That's like me building a statue outside my house and being like, yes, I created Sports Talk ATL. Everyone bowed to me. Like, that's just so weird to me. But I legitimately, if we win a couple more World Series and these deals just pan out, I want the Anthopolis statue. I want it. Like, I, I, I want to see it. I want to touch it I'm more than I want to touch like the statues around Truist Park. I just want to shake. It should just be like a handshake. I just <laughs> Alex and Bob was shaking my hand. Yes, thank it'll you, be sir. nice. You know, and you think about it too, like when you're buying jerseys, like it's just nice to have the gang around, man. You know, no matter what happens, wins, losses, like these are my these are my boys. I love all these players so much, and they're here for the long haul, and I'm really excited about that. That brings me to my next point. Can we get an Anthopolis jersey? I might have to get a custom <laughs> Anthopolis jersey. That that's a good that's a good purchase, guys. I'm just gonna put, get a custom just put number Anthop one on the back. Uh, yeah, number one. I, we gotta f figure out a good number for him. I, I don't know. There's gotta be something crispy. 
But like, yeah, just an Anthopolis jersey um, on the back. I, I think that's going to be my next jersey. I, I have actually lost like two of my most recent ones. One didn't come in the mail, my World Series ones. Anthopolis. I'm going to get a golden World Series Anthopolis custom jersey. That's my next big purchase. <laughs> I just, uh, but um, who's next, guys? Dansby Swanson, Max Freed. Uh, uh, which one, uh, which one, one do you think is more important, Dansby Swanson or Max Freed? And which one do you think is more likely to sign next? Alex, I'll let you go first. Uh, I think Max Freed is definitely more important just because, you know, I know Dan's is probably also one of the leaders of the team, but Max Reed's the leader of uh, the rotation. I mean, you got to lock that kind of guy up. Um, I kind of saw the Michael Harris extension as kind of a precursor to one of these. Uh, you knock off one of the easier contract negotiations and gearing up for the tougher ones, which will definitely be Max Reed. He's going to garner, you know, $200 million. Um, and Dansby, we already know Casey Close is going to represent him. And, you know, that's, He's a professional. He probably won't take what happened with the Freddie negotiations into the Dansby negotiations, but he's definitely, you know, a vet and he's not going to be easy to close this deal with. So I think Dansby's next um, only because he is set to be a free agent this year, whereas Max Free, you know, we got one more uh, year of team control. Jake, what about you? I'm going to throw a name out there. I don't think this is this crazy, but what do you think maybe William Contreras? I think it might be a little early for that. Um, especially since he hasn't taken as many as bats as he should have this year. He's another guy. I mean, especially if the money's right, I don't think it's too crazy. Uh, but I will say, I do think Max is more important. And I'm not saying this stuff does not apply to Dansby, but I've seen Max Freed get his ankle stepped on him and go, you know, throw six shutout innings in, in a closeout game of a World Series. That's a guy that I know I could send out there in the biggest moment of any moment. And he is going to absolutely dog out the other team. You're not going to have any quit in him. We've seen Max, you know, get knocked around in the playoffs a few times, and he always bounces back. He's got that dog in him. And for that reason, I got to go with Max. Yeah, I think when you talk about competitiveness, these are probably the two people that are the most competitive people on the Braves. They're just obsessed with winnings. They really are bulldogs. I think Max shows it in a, in a little different way, so why he gets that reputation. But Dansby Swanson is obsessed with winning. Like, let's make no mistake about it. And I don't think the Vaughn Grissom thing, first of all, people are like, oh, yeah, Vaughn Grissom can just take over for Swanson at shortstop. Guys, one, we have never even seen him play shortstop. I know he's not as good defensively as Dansby Swanson. I know that for a fact. He's not as good offensively right now. And we don't even know if Vaughn Grissom is going to stick. Like, listen, I think he's a stud. I think he's going to be a key piece down the stretch. But just sitting here and saying, oh, we're going to dump Dansby Swanson for Vaughn Grissom after eight games, it's a ridiculous, ridiculous take. I mean, the guy's 21 years old. Not to mention, I do think Vaughn Grissom could make that transition to left field. There's going to be a hole in the outfield. Marcelo Zuna is not making it past this season. I don't even know if he'll make it through the end of the season. Adam Duvall uh, is probably gone unless he signs a, a short-term deal or, or a small deal after his season-ending wrist, wrist surgery. He's probably gone in free agency. I see him getting a multi-year from someone, and I don't see it being the Braves. I think I see them going after different people. So I think there's going to be a hole in left field. You could also DH him. I don't think you want to turn him to a DH, but you could use him as a utility man, other things like that. I, and I just I think Dansby Swanson is a very important piece to this team. The only reason I'm going to say Max Freed is because if you take Max Freed out of the Braves rotation, it's not a championship rotation. You're not winning a championship with the guys you have left. Now, maybe if you replace him with Jacob DeGrom, it's, it's something different. But right now, you take Max Freed out of that rotation, that's not a championship rotation. They're not competing in October. And I do think no matter what, whether Swanson walks or not, the Braves are going to get another shortstop. It's not going to be Vaughn Grissom. I know people think it's good. they're going to go after a Trey Turner, a Carlos Correa, or maybe a stopgap guy until they know Vaughn Grissom is the guy. But there's nothing Vaughn Grissom is going to do over the next 40 games and in the postseason that they're going to be like, yeah, you're definitely our starting and not get a stopgap or anything, not get at least a backup because it's just going to be 40 yeah. game sample size. Yeah, that, that was, that I was going to make that point. Oh, yeah. I was, I'm gonna I was say just the opposite. Say quick. I mean, Michael Michael Harris has you know a 60 game sample size, and that was enough. So you know, 40 games is less, but it's still you know, and he's not playing shortstop, so that's fair. And Michael Harris is obviously a Gold Glove center fielder, so I get that point. But I I still think the sample size it doesn't matter with this front office. Like when they know, they know, and they'll pull the trigger. Yeah, the last thing I was gonna say on it too is when you talk about. 
getting left-handed pitching in terms of a shortstop, uh, the the quality that's going to be on the market is is way way different. And I understand Max isn't a free agent this offseason. Um, but when you talk about, I mean, even just around the league, talking about trading for a guy like high quality left-handed pitching, you could argue that Matt, Max Fried is the best left-handed pitcher, you know, in the majors. I don't think it's crazy to say that. Um, but you can replace Dansby way more easily than you can replace Max. Especially with this free agent class. I mean, it's loaded. Yeah. It's every the best shortstops in baseball are all free agents. It's insane. Yeah, I mean, Swanson, just the whole situation around Swanson, I, you know, we defer on um, on we differ on Vaughn Grissom, whether you think you can be the long term guy or whatever. But the whole situation, the Casey close, the fact that you have other guys, the fact that he's having a career season and you don't know if this is sustainable. You don't know if Dansby Swanson is really up right now. He's sixth among all baseball players in F4. He's ahead of he's ahead of Austin Riley. So technically, one, I don't think that's real. I, that's why I don't love F4. I don't, that's not the end all be all. I mean, Austin Riley to me is a 10 times more valuable player. But right now, he's ahead of Austin Riley. You don't know if you're going to get that because he's never done this before. So maybe he go, he regresses. He's not worth $150, $200 million that some other team might give him. So it's a very tricky situation. And I think it's all going to come down to a lot of these situations. It seems like the guys who want to be here, it's very, it's very easy. You know, Matt Olson signed an extension in two days after he signed. Uh, Freddie Freeman obviously goes off to Los Angeles. Michael Harris, he has a little bit of success. Those negotiations happen within a couple months. It's done. Acuna, Albies, done in a couple months. So it's really going to come down to the player. I mean, these guys are getting paid. You know, people want to be like, oh, you're robbing people. You're robbing people. Guys, they're getting a hundred million bucks, bro. It's not like, <laughs> like I've never heard of someone getting robbed and paid a hundred million dollars. It's the most ridiculous, absurd thing I've ever heard. So it's just like, uh, yeah, I, I do think those negotiations are tricky. And I agree with you, Jake. Max Fried is the most valuable uh, piece. He's one of the most, he might be the most valuable piece on the team, really. He's the people ace talking of the, yeah. he's the leader he's, of the staff. You might be losing Morton too. So so now you're losing Morton and Fried. I mean, in two years, you're definitely losing Morton. So uh, yeah, I think I think Fried's uh, without a doubt the most more important of the two. I just think Dansby Swanson is also extremely important. And I really hope a deal gets done because that really locks in the whole squad. If you can get those two, that locks in the whole squad. Yeah. And I'll, uh, I'm going to say one thing about the Michael Harris extension. I do understand it looks like a low number and it may not age well, but here's the thing. It may not age well for Atlanta either. Do you think Jeff Frank would have liked to have that contract after his rookie year? If somebody asked you, do you want $72 million right now? Or, or do you want maybe $250 million in five years? What are you going to say? Yeah, and it's not really that it doesn't work like that because you know he's still going to get paid 15, 20 mil, like five or 10 down, the, you know, five, 10 years down the road. Uh, he wouldn't be making, he's going to be making, he'd make 500K next year. He'd make 500K yeah. in the next like three years. So, and yeah. you're guaranteed that after playing 70 games in the big with your hometown team. It's not robbery. And listen, he's not even negotiating for himself. These are agents, these are, these are guys that have been in the business for years. So you, if you think they're just going to let them get robbed, it just makes no sense, you know? This deal came out. Michael Harris is playing center field, catching fly balls. You know, like he was at the plate. He, yeah, you think I remember I saw the, it. He was at the plate. You think he's at the table signing this con? You know, yeah, it just it's kind of absurd for people to say, oh, it's robbery. Yeah, and uh, Jeff yeah. Rancor is an absolutely great point because that guy. I mean, he was hitting four hundred after six, sixty games. You know, he would have loved a hundred million bucks. Now he has to call baseball games to stay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. But still, you know what I'm saying? Like he would have loved a hundred million bucks in his pocket. So yeah, that's a that's a really good point there, Jake. In terms of finances, though, like he's getting a raise in the arb years, arbitration years. And if you're talking about total lump sum of career earnings, he's gonna be in line at 30 years old, still in his prime, to get another contract. I mean, he will make more signing early, like over the course of his career. He instead of maybe making, you know, a couple million dollars uh, going into arbitration each year for the next three years, six years, um, and then hitting free agency and signing a two hundred million dollar deal. He's going to sign a two hundred million dollar deal at 30 with seventy five million dollars already in his pocket. I mean, in terms of the life of his career yeah. or the lifetime earnings, he will earn more signing this contract. Well, this is a this is a point I made when Acuna signed his ten for a hundred deal, and then Tatis signed his fifteen for like three thirty. I'm like, at the end of the day, Acuna is going to make more money. Acuna will be a free agent at twenty nine years old, 
And then he so will we'll sign. Buy- he will sign for half a billion dollars. He'll sign for half a billion dollars. Meanwhile, Tatis will probably be a free agent at 37. And listen, Tatis already, nobody wants him for that contract. So by the time Tatis is 37, if he's even still in the league, he's definitely not getting a, a $500 million contract. He might not get another contract, which is much more likely than him getting, you know, 100 mil or whatever to catch up to Acuna. So I actually made that a point when everyone was saying Acuna was getting robbed. He, there, he's not really getting robbed. He's setting himself up for two contracts and gearing himself a hundred million bucks. It's not, a, it's not a bad deal. And newsflash people, not all of these guys are just obsessed with having 600 million bucks. They, they like where they are. They like the franchise. They like the security. They came from Venezuela. Ronald Acuna goes back to Venezuela in the off season. It's not about having 800 million bucks, bro. With a hundred million bucks, he could buy the whole damn country. Like it's just... People don't realize a lot of these things. Not everyone's obsessed with having a billion dollars. Like some people are like, oh, it's okay. I can have 300 million bucks. I'll live just fine. My grandkids, grandkids, grandkids are going to be just fine off this 300 million bucks. And some people like where they are. It's the, the idea of robbery to me is just is just hilarious. You're a maniac. You can't You're putting your nose up at $72 million. Like, oh, I wouldn't take 72 million. Shut up. You can't. I get that on the scale of MLB players. We can't put these guys in our, you know, conversation. It is, you know, a great deal for the Braves if Michael. That's the big thing. If Michael Harris turns out to be what we think he's going to be, this isn't a proven thing. He's only played half a season, and though we all think that he is the real deal, it's not guaranteed. But you can't put a price on like happiness and being content. Michael Harris grew up a Braves fan. He grew up in Georgia. This is his dream to play for this team. I don't think it's necessarily taking advantage of Michael Harris. This is a fair deal for where he's at. He's getting more money up front throughout his arbitration years. I mean, this is not, you know, some holding a gun to his head and making him sign this deal. Like, these are negotiations. You don't think that like these agents are trying to get the most money for their client and themselves. Like this is ridiculous. Yeah, no, the, the whole idea of robbery is crazy, especially after a guy's only played, you know, I think Acuna had only played a hundred games. Like when we had done, when we uh, re-signed him, I don't even know if he, he, yeah, I think it was right after his rookie season. I think he played a hundred games his rookie season. So he'd only played in like a hundred games. Michael Harris has played in less than that. Uh, I mean, people saying it's robbery just have no clue what they're talking about. And honestly, they're just jealous that we just keep re-signing guys. And guys want to be here, and it's been very easy for us, you know. They're jealous. It's jealousy. You know, people want to say it's robbery. It's really just jealousy of how well the whole franchise uh, is, is run right now. It's it, From top to bottom, it's, it's spotless reputation. People want to be here, and that's why we keep getting these deals. And that's why I think free agents are going to keep wanting to come here, and we're going to have money to spend. So I actually saw a tweet today, Jim Bowden, uh, says the Braves, you know, he always asks Alex Anthopoulos, what are we looking for? What are we looking for? He always responds, looking for an ace. Well, guys, there's a guy we play tomorrow. There's a guy we play tomorrow on Thursday named Jacob DeGrom, who happens to be a free agent at the end of the year once he opts out. Is he going to be the top target for the Braves? Is, I mean, I know, I know we all say it. I do think he will be the Braves' top target. And I do think we will hand them the fat deal the three, the three year, $150 million, something like that. I would not be surprised if they offered him a short life contract with just a huge AAV, kind of like Max Scherzer just signed. Yeah. I wouldn't be shocked. I I also think that it'll, we can't pay as much as Steve Cohen can. I mean, we could, but we won't. Um, So if he chooses the Braves over the Mets, it won't be because we offered him more money. It's because he wants to be here. And that'll be it'll be really revealing uh, about the Mets organization as a whole, that you're the best pitcher in baseball in the last 50 years, uh, chose to go to your division rival over more money to stay home. You're 100 percent right. It will not be about money. The, The Braves will never be able to compete with the likes of the Dodgers and the Mets and the Yankees if they want to spend more they're even as good even as much as i think the braves will raise payroll over the next few years uh, with everything that's happening those guys are always going to be able to spend more especially steve cohen but i do think it, it, there's a lot of things you know new uh jacob de grom comes out to simple man he's kind of a quiet mild-mannered guy uh you know a lot of people have speculated if he really loves like being in new york um he went to stetson in florida much closer to home you know he has homes down there so there's a lot of things that, like, if if he didn't love all the New York media hype, you know, listen, another guy, 
Maybe he doesn't want a billion dollars. 150, 100 million. He, he already made 175 million on his last contract. Maybe he doesn't. Maybe he doesn't want a 500 million bucks. It's not about maybe he that. Wants to win. Yeah, maybe he wants to win. I mean, God, you put Jacob Degrom on this team next year with Max Fried leading that rotation and Spencer Strider and that lineup, dude. If you think you're beating the Braves, if that, if you think you're beating the Braves and they they stay healthy. You, you're on crack. You have no chance. We would we would smoke everyone. And I know baseball comes down to a lot of luck. Uh, I, I don't think you could outluck how much talent that team would have. It would be unbelievable. And, and true as Park, I mean, talk about rocking, bro. I mean, it would be a party. We'd be we'd be celebrating the World Series in April. One note <laughs> I do have uh, about Degrom, uh, just to, I guess point out the obvious. We say, well, he's going to be the Braves' top target. He's going to be like 2017 top target, probably. So there's going to be some competition. But I do think Atlanta. It's very attractive destination. I don't. I, you're set up to win for multiple years. Uh, you really don't have to carry at all. Um, you can just be great, and uh, they're gonna they're gonna offer you know a competitive offer. So we'll see how it goes. Side note: I mean, if that actually happens, this is a big if. Um, Frank might actually have a heart attack and die. Uh, Frank the Tank. Yeah. I, I I would feel bad for him if Degrom ended up signing with the Braves. I mean, he might combust. Oops. And I think another thing, aside from, you know, the location and a more mild-mannered city and stuff like that, look at how the Braves have kind of kept their pitchers healthy as far as arms go. Uh, DeGrom's had arm problems his whole time. He, he, like you said, Jake, he wouldn't be asked to carry anything. I think there would be a lot less pressure on him in Atlanta. Um, and I just think – I think a lot of those things happen. I mean, the Braves training staff – I mean, who's the last guy really I, – I mean, I guess Luke Jackson, but who's the last, like, starting pitcher – to have like a significant, like Mike Soroka was an Achilles, a significant arm injury. I, I just, I can't really, the last starting pitcher. Do, do, do you remember Jake? It's been a while. Yeah. And then you look at the Mets. I mean, it seems like they, they've had problems with this all the time. And I know some of it is on DeGrom, but that's another thing to think about. Uh, I think training staffs, I think that's going to be important. I don't think it's going to come down to money. If it does, it's not going to be the Braves. It's never going to be the Braves when it comes down to money and the top tier free agents. I don't think it ever be. But if you want to win, if you're okay taking, you know, it's we pay you fair. Uh, it's an attractive destination. So um, speaking of aces, uh, let's get back to Mike Soroka. Um, could Mike Soroka be that ace we're talking about in two years? Could he could he come back? And, and after that, let, give me your odds that he contributes this season. You go first. I don't want to go first. <laughs> All right, I'll go first. I'll go first. I'm going to go 58.3%. I have I ran it through my model. Like, I crunched the numbers. I'm going to so, go 58. So, okay, okay. So I want to define contribute. Like, is he uh, let's let's define contribute as he's on the playoff roster let's Ooh. like it's not it's not just like he i think there i think there's a much higher chance that we see him in september than than he's on the and on the playoff roster what let, that's going to define that's the definition of contribute in this sense i'm still confident but if he goes out there in september and gives you big innings and you look at somebody that would be on the playoff roster potentially you know, that you wouldn't really trust in that situation. I'm going with Soroka. I'm putting my best foot forward, even if it's out of the pen. You know, we've seen uh, that long relief role. Max Free did it a couple years ago, uh, that that leverage role. Um, I could see him doing that. Um, I don't think it's ridiculous. It's, it, it, as long as he pitches well, that's a big if. But I, I, I'm going to say I'm confident. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say a little bit over 50%. I'm going to go 58.3%. That's my efficient number. I know we're, you know, a little worried about Odorizzi or maybe even Ian Anderson, but you know, in terms of arms, the bullpen and the rotation is not kind of set, but you know, we're comfortable. It's good. They're both very good. So we don't necessarily need Mike Soroka. And to that point, I don't think we, we would love to have him, but I don't think that the Braves are going to force, you know, this guy back. And it's not like, you know, he doesn't want to come back, but I think the Braves are going to be overly cautious with him, you know, Contributing in the long relief role is about the only way I could see him contributing in the playoffs on the roster. Um, they're not going to throw him out there for a start. You know, him starting a playoff game has got to be less than like two percent. Um, ah, that's a that's a that's a disaster ah. scenario for me. That is a disaster when you have when you have Morton, Strider, Freed, and Wright. Something has gone wrong. Guys, guys, no, I was actually about to bring this up. I could see a situ situation 
where Mike Soroka is starting the fourth playoff game over Kyle Wright. I love Kyle Wright. I think he's having a great year. But let's talk about this. I mean, what, I mean, yeah, great season. He he pitched out of the bullpen and 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 in spot starts last year and had a lot of success. Mike Soroka hasn't really done that. Um, that Mike Soroka, it's really all about him getting stretched out. If he looks like this and he gets stretched out and he's throwing 90, 100 pitches, he can definitely make a start. And if Kyle Wright, you know, he has arm fatigue right now. If he struggles down the stretch, I think you could see him come out of the bullpen. I think he's a better option to come out of the bullpen than Mike Soroka. So I, I wouldn't say 2%. I still think it's low because everything would have to go right. But I, it's, yeah, every, no pun intended. Everything would have to go right for Mike Soroka and wrong for Kyle Wright. But um, I, I don't I don't think that's as outlandish of a, a scenario if he's healthy. You know, if he's healthy, by we're assuming everything goes right. If he's healthy, I could see that happening. I could see him being the fourth guy. And, and dude, he looked amazing last night. He looked amazing. You need, to, you need to squat on that take. I think you're about two and a half, three weeks too early on that one. I, I, I would let that one marinate a little longer. You also consider this. The person making the decisions is not Anthopolis. Well, in the playoff roster, but turning in those starters card is Brian Snicker, the most conservative guy in all of baseball, maybe. I do not think he's going to, you know, try some risky thing. I, I don't think he does that. I, I don't, I don't know, man, starts- but in the playoffs, he's, he's so different in the playoffs. And sometimes yeah. he just presses Everything's- the right buttons. Yeah. And I mean, and I just think I'm just thinking Kyle Wright is a better bullpen piece than Mike Soroka. I think that also and the arm fatigue. So there's issues. There's a lot of things. And yeah, we're definitely two or three weeks away from saying it. Of course, I'm going to say it early because I got to be ahead of the curve if anyone's going to like be like, give me some praise. So I got to be ahead of the curve here. I'm going to say if everything goes well, he's the fourth starter for the Braves. But that's that that is there's so much to get there. There's so much to get there. But I could see it. I could see it happening. That's like hitting an eight leg parlay. I mean, everything has to go right. You know, Soroka, no more setbacks. Soroka gets stretched out enough times. Soroka looks like his stuff is still filthy. Kyle Wright takes well, so steps the, the back. Soroka, the, yes, and it's it's I think it's more like a five leg parlay, which is much okay. more doable. Ask Calvin <laughs> Ridley. Ask Calvin Ridley. Much more doable than an eight leg parlay. Calvin. I think it's more more of a, a five leg parlay. I agree, everything has to go right. But listen, if he feels good, the stretched out thing's going to happen on so. It's really just about avoiding injury, um, wh- whether it's to an arm. But they're not going to rush him. But I think you give him uh, five more starts in the minors. That's going to build him up. He's going to be pretty stretched out. He's probably. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Next time he goes out, his pitch limit's probably going to be fifty. Uh, then then you get into the 60, 70 in his next start. And then next thing you know, he's throwing 95 pitches in Gwinnett and striking out 12 batters. And you're like, ah, shit, ah, shit. And he's then he's back on the roster and he has a good start. And then, I, I mean, you could definitely give him a start if you get to that point. I do think it's a long shot. I would say that's – but I'd say it's more like 10% than two. 10% than two. To make – you know, get our hopes up even more. Uh, he said that his sinker looks better than it's ever. So, I mean, I have, that's that's what that's what I heard. Uh, I mean, and he's confident, man. That's the other thing about Soroka, dude. The guy just beams confidence, beams confidence. You don't have a problem, Kyle Wright. On the other hand, yeah, sometimes there's a little shakiness. He he's been a totally different guy this year, and I don't want to bash Kyle Wright because he's been our guy all year, and I love him. I'm just saying, Mike Soroka is a little bit of a different beast when he's healthy. He just is. Uh, there's a reason why he almost won the NL Cy Young as a rookie. Speaking of a different beast, the guy who pitched last night, Charlie Morton, ah, that that's the guy the Braves need. You, you want to talk about winning World Series? He's your number three. I, I I think that's the guy who's a number three. He might even be your number two just because of his veteran leadership and and you know Strider. You never know. Um, but yeah, that that was an unbelievable uh, performance. The Braves are now three and a half backs in the division. And guys, how about this lineup? No Marcel Azuna? I mean, this lineup fucks. It's it's badass, bro. I mean, it is it, top to bottom. There are no easy outs. I want to say something. I mean, if he pitches like that, I don't. It's un, he's unquestionably the number two, uh, unquestionably, uh, because of that veteran experience. I mean, he's just been there so many different times. You don't you don't throw a rookie Spencer Strider out there instead of Charlie Morton, especially Snit. Snit's not going to do that. Uh, if he's pitching like that, his curveball was nasty. He was locating it. Um, inside, outside. He, he, it was beautiful. It was great to see. And for the first time all season, it looked like he was actually happy with his outing. And I know this was the best outing he's had, but it seemed like even if he had a pretty good outing, he would come back and, you know, he'd be 
all doom and gloom and he'd be disappointed in himself. And he finally looked like he was, you know, and that's just being, you know, a veteran pitcher, just, you know, remaining calm, remaining cool, you know, not too high, not too low. Uh, but it was good to see him actually, you know, happy with his stuff. Yeah, I want to talk a little more about this lineup. I agree with everything you said. Uh, I think Charlie. I think Charlie's the number two if he pitches like that. We'll see if he can build off that. I do think the Braves will probably give him some space in between starts. Uh, he's talked around the All-Star break how the extra rest helps him. Now that you have Odorizzi, you can bring Anderson in every now and then. I wouldn't be surprised if they start giving him a couple of days rest down the stretch of this season. Um, I want to get back to this lineup, though. Uh, Ronald Acuna starting to look like the best player in the National League again. William Contreras in the DH spot, totally a total game changer. I mean, I've been preaching for it, but it's a total game changer. He's so much better than Ozuna. Uh, Eddie Rosario, the guy can see again. Uh Uh-oh, you know what happens when the guy sees. He wins NLCS MVPs. That's what happens. Um, Robbie Grossman, even. Vaughn Grissom right now, unbelievable. Ozzy Albies should be on his way back. So whether you believe Vaughn is sustainable or not, Ozzy should be on his way back. Uh, Darno's healthy. He had two hits last night and a homer the night before. Eh, Matt Olson's getting hot. Austin Riley's an MVP candidate. I, I'm just saying everything needs to get lined up for October. And whether we win the division or not, if this is the crew we have hitting like they are, I feel confident in any series. I don't care if it's a two-game series or a three-game series, five-game series, seven-game series. I feel confident in this bunch. And I think they can repeat as champions if they keep playing like this. Yeah, it only took until, you know, August, the middle of August, That's and Travis Darno. It took, it took to the beginning last. of August last year. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, took to the middle of August for Snit to play uh, Travis Darno and Bill. Um, and I know Travis was hurt there for a second, and we we're trying to get Marcel going. But, you know, Marcel should never play another game unless one of those guys needs a rest. And even then, it's like, you know, just DH, Robbie Grossman, or uh, Eddie, honestly. Um, but it's it's great to see. Uh, I mean, Travis Darno is an underrated piece on this team. I mean, he caught every single inning uh, of the postseason last year. He's a veteran leader. He's kind of a blue guy. Freddie's gone. You need that older guy who gets along with everybody. Uh, maybe an unsung hero of the year. Yeah, uh, this is something that drove me crazy, too, the other day when we were I was talking about, um, you know, I was like, hey, when Ozzy gets back, I want to stick Vaughn in left field. And everybody's saying, well, it's ridiculous. He's never played left field. I was like, okay, well, let's see. Combined, Grossman, Rosario, and Ozuna are worth like minus 23 F4 defensively. Um, so I would probably rather got, have a guy who has not ever played left field. I'd probably well, rather Well, neither is Marcel. I mean, clearly Marcel's never played left field either. I mean, when he's exactly. out there, it looks How like much worse could it actually be? If you're a decent though? athlete, you could play left field. Yeah. What's crazy is Ozuna has a gold glove in center field. That is nuts. It, what? It's just, it, I, yes, he has a gold glove in center field. The gold glove award is just a fucking joke. By the way, Michael Harris definitely should win the gold glove. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but he probably won't because he's the best center, defensive center fielder. Um, yeah, I, I think the writing's on the wall for Ozuna. I, I, I gave him a lot of sh- uh, snicker, a lot of shit for starting him. I understand why he did it uh, because you have so much money attached to him and because you hope he can get going. But the fact that last night Robbie Grossman started against a right hander. Uh, that's the writing on the wall. I mean, the guy hits like 190 against right-handers, and they were just like, yeah, we'd rather have him hit than you. I, I wouldn't be totally surprised that when Ozzy comes back, Ozuna is the guy who gets kicked off the team. I think they'll keep Peretti over Ozuna. I wouldn't I wouldn't be shocked at all. I mean, what the hell does Ozuna offer? I would rather, have my, I, I'd rather have my cheerleader, bro. Like, he's not even a good cheerleader. Uh, like he doesn't even take <laughs> selfies anymore when he hits a homer. It's bullshit. remember when he did that like one time after he hit like one of his first home runs, never did it again. <laughs> I think everybody was kind of like, yeah, let's, let's just not do that anymore. Um, yeah. So I think the writing's on the wall for him. He's definitely I, not making the playoff roster. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. I'll tell you that for free. I will say though, if somehow, yeah, I mean, why, why would you, I mean, you don't, you don't have a need to pinch hit anymore. Um, you yeah. just don't. The only reason you'd have him on there is because it's like, oh, we got power. Back. Maybe he'll look into a home run when we need like a three run bomb. But that situation comes up so small. And like when you look at our lineup, like I just said, everyone can hit a fucking bomb. Like it's I'd rather have like, Max Freed pinch it, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, and dude, you just can't take away Heredia, our cheerleader. Like he, you can't take him away. He's the cocky guy. He brings the energy. Like I, I want him on the roster. Plus, he can be a defensive replacement. For maybe Vaughn Grissom if he's playing left field or Eddie Rosario. Relatively so, speedy, yeah. There, there's at least some sort of value in his cheerleading. I can't get away from his cheerleading. But yeah, I agree. Yes. You know, 
swath. But obviously, there's some value to it. They've kept him this long, dude. They could have cut him a hundred times. Oh over. my god! Chemistry does, matters. Chemistry matters. My guy, he, the guy, the matters. guy has next to nothing on the baseball field, <laughs> but it, it is total chemistry thing. Bro, like even when the Braves lose, I'm telling you, if you go to like Heredia's like Instagram page, I feel like when the team should be down, he's the guy who keeps it up. Like his Instagram live videos, like he just is so funny and it's like contagious. Like he's just doing the stupid little faces on Snapchat filters and stuff like that <laughs> with like the players and just like, you know, cracking up, giving that like, ah! and just like you can't help but laugh. Like it totally, it's totally why he's on the team and people can, can hate on it and be like, oh, he doesn't add anything. He definitely adds something. And that clubhouse shit matters. And when you have a DH, you don't really need bench players. Like, you, you might need him in, in a pinch. Like, he can play outfield, play a little defense, whatever, dude. It's just Ozone, Ozuna can't do anything. So so he, there's no way he's on the postseason roster. I, I also do love how Heredia, like, every time he's at bat, every swing he takes is he is swinging as hard as possibly can. Yeah. You, dude, he only gets, like, one at bat every four weeks. He is it's like, hacking, man. He's, like, yeah. uppercutting, too. Like, he's definitely trying to hit it out swinging. He's about to swing out of his shoes. Like, his helmet will fly off. I love it. I absolutely What's funny love it. is, like, the reason he stuck around, like, other than just the clubhouse thing is for, like, I don't know, early last year, like, when we had a bunch of injuries, like, he was starting, and, like, he hit that grand slam against the Cubs, and there was a point where he was hitting, like, 350 over, like, three weeks. And, like, that just, like, got him, like, okay, we, he, he can hit if he needs to. He's such a good clubhouse guy. And now he's been around for two years. And, hell, I don't even mind re-signing him. Just keep him on the team. If we win another World Series, I need Heredia on the team. I think that – I don't think you can kick him off the team. He's part of the team. He's two-time world champ. Yeah. Can't take it. Can't take that away from him. Nope. The last thing I want to say about – upcoming schedules uh we're still three and a half back we got scherzer and Degrom. we really need to end this week strong we have scherzer and Degrom, then the astros but then you look at the Mets schedule they play us two times then they get a four game series with philly then they got the yankees then they got the dodgers so if there's ever a moment where we're going to catch up because the Mets schedule gets super easy after that they play like nothing but the pirates and reds and nationals and marlins the rest of the way they might go yeah, yeah. 21 this is four. the lineup this is the lineup i'm going to read this out loud i have it in front of me Washington, Pittsburgh, Miami, Chicago, Pittsburgh, Milwaukee, Oakland, Miami, Atlanta, Washington. That is yes. wow. So, so you don't like you really. I mean, I, I think you obviously need to split this, but you probably need to win these two and get it down to one and a half, and hope they they take they you know they're down on themselves. They got swept by the Braves. They thought they were already division champs in August. And then they slump against the Phillies. And next thing you know, the Braves are in first place. I, th I think that needs to happen over, over the next two weeks. Or you're pretty much, you know, shit out of luck when it comes to the division. But like I said, the division, it's all about pride. This The Braves are going to make the playoffs, get lined up for October. They should be just fine. I'm really excited about this. And hopefully we have some good news when we do an episode.